So good afternoon. This is Sunil Kakde. Uh, I'm from Dignity Health. I'm a director for IT in Dignity Health. And today I'm here with uh, um, uh, Chief Medical Information Officer, SAS, uh, Dr. Graham Hughes. He's going to join me at the end of the sessions to uh, do any discussion or any questions if you have. So uh, w what we'd like to do in this uh, uh, presentation is share our journey of moving uh, analytics, and especially healthcare analytics, to Hadoop. Um, and like we, we started our program about in a year uh, back, and like Hadoop journey really started about five months back, and we wanted to show you our learnings and where we are at. So a real quick question, like how many of you are from healthcare or healthcare background? Okay, that's good. And anybody from payer side versus pro payer side? And then provider side? Okay, thank you very much for uh, responding to that because healthcare is a different um, um, sp spectrum, different industry itself. I moved from retail, I was in retail uh, and doing the Hadoop implementation, took uh, from 10 nodes to about 600, 700 nodes and moved a lot of analytics and data processing there. Um, and now I'm in healthcare and I'm learning a lot of new things in last over one year that how complex a healthcare industry is. So it's a very exciting time for people in IT, especially in healthcare IT, because there are a lot of opportunities emerging out uh, because the technology such as Hadoop is evolving and it's becoming more mature and helping to uh, um, <coughs> eliminate some of the constraints we have uh, which in traditional technologies. So, um, oops. Yep. So no matter how much you prepare for this, like there will be one technical gauge. <laughs> Uh, we can't predict that with analytics. So, uh, one of the thing here, like you know, uh, uh, we want to quickly introduce you who we are. Uh, what is Dignity Health? So, uh, Dignity Health is one of the leading uh, healthcare uh, provider in the nation. Uh, as you can see, we we have uh, 13 billion in assets, 55,000 employees, uh, 10,000 plus active physicians. We have 40 plus hospitals. But the key thing here for us is that like we almost spend more than billion dollar to for community and taking care of poor. That's what we stand for. Dignity Health stands for the <coughs> human kindness. We it's a notion that like you know proven notion. If we act with the kindness and we help each other, uh, we can actually uh, heal body, spirit, and mind. That's the motto of Dignity Health. So everything we do in Dignity Health is around human kindness. Uh, that's our philosophy. So as you can see that we, are, we have a presence uh, all over the nation. And what this tells is that, uh, imagine how big our uh, uh, medical data ecosystem is. We have, <coughs> we, have uh, <coughs> sorry. we have multiple registration systems. We have multiple uh, acute systems. So data is flowing from multiple directions. And this is exactly a good opportunity to bring that data into one place. One of the challenges uh, with healthcare analytics is, um, in, in current state, is there is a tremendous amount of uh, pressure on a business. And where is this pressure coming from? Regulations, it is coming from the cost pressure. The business model itself is changing. You are moving from now uh, a fee to service to you are going into the pop health. So what this calls for is a powerful capability, analytical capability, where you need to build uh, and understand what is happening, what is going to happen, what has happened, and that analytical capability is the one which is um, um, going to help uh, reduce some of the uh, business performance pressure. So um, another aspect is the, 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 you know, healthcare is all about saving lives and, you know, giving the better patient outcome. So potential in healthcare is very high. And just to give an example, uh, like over a million people, um, get affected uh, by sepsis condition in uh, America. And if you, if you probably don't know, like 28 to 50% of these people die. Sepsis, uh, and this number is much more higher than the total number of prostate cancer, breast cancer, and AIDS combined. Now why we are talking about this is, this is one, one situation where the, the condition itself is a time sensitive. Sooner you act and analyze, you have potential to save that life. 
And if you look at the, at the burden this condition puts into the, like if you have 2% of the uh, hospitalization happening and 17% of deaths are contributed to sepsis. So imagine in healthcare space, if you can build some analytics around it to predict the sepsis condition or uh, uh, provide an uh, uh, intelligence or exploratory analysis where you can find out you know, the good practices and, and, and not so good practices, you have, you, you have opportunity to make direct impact to um, uh, the, the patients and, and take care of uh, our patients. So if you look at the dignity, as we said, like we have 40 plus hospitals and multiple uh, medical systems, there is a lot of data. We have data like, you know, um, it's 30 per terabyte data, but data is there in uh, silos. So what if we can bring in one place, then we can start analyzing um, the complete episodes for a particular person. And that's the, their opportunities. And once you analyze that and giving that information to right people can actually make a lot of difference. Now, um, this is the slide from Iron Mountain. What this is showing is, if you look at this, uh, the challenges with the healthcare data, this is a one dimension of it, where you have a very sophisticated equipment. Data is generating in the real life, real time, coming from different equipments. And if you look at this slide, like, you know, the patient is right there. So, so we are generating so much of data to do what? Monitoring. But what if we can do analytics on top of that? We can actually um, uh, have potential to reduce any risk associated with the patient. Now, the challenges with healthcare data is number one uh, is complexity. Uh, it's, it's, it is a lot of proprietary formats are there. If you have heard the terms like HL7, et cetera. And this, this complexity actually creates a lot of obstacle for doing analytics. The variety of data is high. Like if you, if you go to one EMR versus another EMR versus on one register system, the data starts, it's all the functionally, it's the same data, it starts becoming a different. So making analytics becomes extremely complex. The, it's, a first, uh, it's a fast data, like it's constantly evolving. Now, um, one of the thing here is you could, you could put a very solid big data platform, can absorb as much of data you can, you can even tackle the variety and complexity. But the biggest complexity uh, for healthcare is uh, handling this data in terms of privacy. It, it's, 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 it, if you cannot get your privacy right, the, the protection of privacy right for a data, you basically doesn't matter how big your Hadoop cluster is or your other, whether you're using HBase or Presta, that doesn't matter at all. So uh, these are the challenges one needs to take care before even if you venture into launching your first production job. Now that's the one side of it. The other side of the data challenges is a lot of this data is sitting into the um, legacy format. Now this is, our data is not in the paper format. That's just a, the symbolic picture here. But what we are saying is if you, you may have a data, but if you cannot interpret that data from, uh, for analytics, it's there and it's sitting, it's a dark data. Like we have data in the mainframe format. So you can imagine the files is sitting in the flat files with the COBOL layouts where you have a, um, you know, flat file is having 17 different formats and each format is need to be read um, um, in a differently. And that, that rigidity actually uh, hurts doing any type of analytics. So on one hand, we have algorithms, very sophisticated algorithms like neural networks and Nibase or you know, uh, support vector machines, those can do miracles to do a good prediction. But how do I get data to those algorithms and that logic? That's a challenge. And that's the challenge we are trying to resolve and solve um, in Dignity Health. So what this needs is a, a complete different mindset. The mindset which goes beyond our traditional thinking of business intelligence, where I can ETL data, bring the data, somebody ask me, give me a report, I give the report, and then I keep report. Like So sometimes you may have 10,000 employees and 20,000 reports. So we don't know whether everybody's looking at this report, but you are churning the data and producing the insight which is either outdated or dead. So what you need is new thinking, you know, uh, like we have a, a disruptive technologies like Hadoop and we, ha we have to have complete new problem mindset, which means, you know, I, if I am, I, somebody asked me to do analysis and they say, hey, I need these four variables. Um, I don't need to go and write an ETL for those four variables. I can sim simply bring everything and then keep 
the mind open and find out what what else I can find it out. And we can do that now in with uh, using the technologies like Hadoop. So with that in a mindset and with the with the goal to build a world class like future state analytical platform, uh, we partnered with SAS and uh, come up with this. Uh, uh, concept uh, or of uh, enterprise data hub and what if you notice there like you know it's hadoop centric you got hadoop in the center however we brought in the the uh, unified processes that's the governance we are putting in a place and then on top of that we are taking advantage of much more matured analytical platform of sas and so we are taking these two ecosystems and putting this together and i'll explain you what are the advantages of um, of this combination is um, so um, if you look at this, what we are trying to do is we want to build a platform once which can take care of all workloads. You know, it, it, it should do, help me with writing ETL. I don't need to go and create another platform for writing ETL. I, I, it will act as a data reservoir or the data lake. It can keep as much data, it is scalable. I can do a search. I don't have to go and invest into another search engine. I can do um, a machine learning in combination with some of the SaaS tools. I have the the, the security platform established on top of that. We can do text mining, we can do natural language processing, all those capabilities. So this is the this concept thing. Uh, what, what we found the advantage of extending our relationship with SAS, which is, is that like SAS does all type of analytics and they've been doing for more than 30 years. And we could easily turn on the value for any of the insight by, because I have my data and as soon as I, uh, turn on one of the algorithm, I start getting the value. So that's the integration really helping. But the more critical point is, it is a full spectrum of analytics. It brings um, um, it brings hindsight, insights, and foresight. And you can do optimization, you can do predictive modeling. So in healthcare, uh, although we're starting with uh, the focus of provider and um, a payer, at some point we do do marketing, we do financials. So I could use all these tools to extract build the platform and extend enterprise data hub into enterprise analytical hub. That's what we are achieving here. So how did we do this? And we, um, we started this inside out. The critical thing for us is we wanted to get Hadoop right. Um, and then we didn't want it to start any use case until we solidified Hadoop completely. So without even thinking about any use case, first thing we did is we got the Hadoop, we established the audit and logging. If you do not have right audit and logging in healthcare, really your system doesn't is not going to fly with your legal and compliance. So uh, we took a, we initially tested this entire platform that anybody accesses our data, we will know who is that. It, we will also find out that like you know what time that uh, data is accessed. In fact, some of these logs will become a part of Hadoop cluster itself. So as as somebody accessing something, these logs will start getting and streamed into Hadoop. Then we went to the uh, the establishing the um, um, security, which is very, very critical. So um, we took advantage of SaaS's security uh, intelligence platform. What it allows us to do is, it allows us to set the role-based security uh, um, um, as well as like it can allow us to do metadata-based security. And why is this like important? Obviously we are securing Hadoop cluster with Kerbos and then Sentry to do what uh, Hadoop is doing. But uh, this analytics at the end of the day is going to go to the end users. And this these analytics need to be absolutely secured so that like we, we can, con with confidence, we can give our platforms to the end users. Then we establish the data governance. So there is, there is a broad conversation about what is data governance is. They, it's not just one product will turn on your data governance. It starts with your own philosophy and your own processes you are putting around that. Our simple philosophy about data governance is this. Bring data once, do not bring it again. That starts with creating single source of truth. If you are, if a patient got registered once, you should have one entry for that. And our, that allows us to use the, some of the concept from Hadoop, which is like extract, load, and then transform. That's what we are doing. We are not using our traditional approach of ETL. We, 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 you know, we believe ETL is, um, it's, it's not relevant anymore. Um, we can just do EL and then write as many transformation I need. It's establishing the governance, uh, tighter governance on data. 
Um, we actually check everybody who is going to create an hive table. Why are they creating? What are the reason? What is the source of it? And if it is already created, you do not need to. And after establishing the data governance, then we started our use case, the journey of use cases. Now, that the, our experience is if you get this first four right, your speed of the use cases started getting, and you can run the use cases in parallel. One of the use cases is like, yeah, we, we process the data and push into analytical enterprise miner SaaS tool, which does a predictive modeling for us. And at the same time, I'm doing the exploration analytics using the tool called SaaS Visual Analytics. Okay, so one other thing we did is like, we didn't go and buy our own hardware and start assembling the Hadoop cluster. We put this into, um, um, in, in cloud. So we are, uh, SaaS is our partner uh, in this engagement. We, they have the cloud and we took advantage of their cloud where we put the, uh, our Hadoop cluster. So what this does to us is we are focusing truly on what we want to do, which is analytics. I do not need to monitor a Hadoop cluster. I do not need to worry about like, you know, if, you know, the, uh, if some error came in, some warning came in, some logs are generating, it's, it's been taken care. Um, and what we did is, if you notice this architecture where we bring the data into Hadoop, that's the only source we have, uh, all the data comes into Hadoop, we broke all the rules of normalization. We do not need, we just are denormalizing. That's the key for us. If I don't want to replicate the enterprise data warehouse or the relational database structure into Hadoop, when we bring something, we flattened it. And in healthcare, that's critical. Healthcare, the data is not going to be high volume. It's not going to be like, you know, uh, like a Facebook where they are, um, LinkedIn, they will, will not have billions of records or transactions. We will have, you know, total population of United States is about 300 to 400 million, dollar, million people, right? So if you think about your data, and if you get your data architecture right, you should have 400 million rows. And then you can go as many times you want in horizontal way. Like, you know, when person gets admitted, have a record. After that, if he goes for test, add that another combination. Think about using the columnar technology like HBase and creating this kind of uh, data architecture. So our goal is bring the data into Hadoop and secure it there. You know, we have tiger security with Sentry and Kerbos there, and then only system is talking. Then we push the data into SaaS analytical platform to perform the uh, analytical workload. In this analytical workload, it could be for data profiling, data quality, it could be for building predictive models, or even to do a web reports or standard reports if you need to. So, you know, BI is not dead. BI is going to be there. BI has its own purpose. It tells you what happened very well, and you need to have presence of that. And now, on the other hand, you want to go for the advanced analytics, which is like start finding what is going to happen or what I don't know. That's where SAS Visual Analytics comes into play. It's an in-memory product where when I, and it has the underlying HDFS scalable platform. So when I move data from HDFS to HDFS, I can do exploration in memory and try to find out what's happening. To give an example, like, you know, when somebody gets admitted in registration system, you could get records up to 1900 columns. So if you want to analyze, right, as a human beings, we can analyze up to seven variables. Think about, you know, ability to go and uh, do uh, multi-dimension analysis. It allows with the tools such as visual analysis, you can do that. And on top of that, as I said, like we put SaaS intelligence platform. So user always come through this authentication, single authentication, seamless experience for them because they're using LDAP. And then they are seeing the insights. Now we have a data scientist who needs to do any deep analytics. We can provide an access to them for Hadoop platform. Okay, so this is, the, we believe this is a pragmatic approach and this is why. Um, as a as an architect, I always want a flexibility on my platform, but I also do not want to go and start creating something which has already been done, um, because like I'm going to f do the same mistakes and try to mature. So I have this mature analytical platform with mature analytical processes, which I would want to take advantage of. But I also want to take advantage of Hadoop and its cost effectiveness and its uh, all the power Hadoop bringing. So we are empowering analytics with uh, Hadoop. What we are doing is we, we bring the data into Hadoop, that's our data lake, um, uh, and then we process that in Hadoop, then we move data as required into a SaaS. I can move in the SaaS, or SaaS 
models can be moved into Hadoop. I can do hybrid. All possibilities exist for uh, doing this. So what this does to us is this. We are enabling the data decision life cycle um, with help of SAS and Hadoop combined. As you can see, Hadoop is at the center of this. So if my data grows, I'm not worried. I'm going to go and scale it, right? We started with few nodes right now and like uh, six nodes in production and we are going to add another eight nodes. So as we adding the data, we started expanding the, the nodes. That's the scalability part of it. And then, you know, I can process the, um, at the same time, the power of this, I can run multiple use cases. The use cases that actually can do an exploration type of analysis, can do predictive analytics, can also do a modernization of the legacy systems, et cetera. Now, the, as I said, the different design pattern, that's what uh, um, I'm looking as an architect. Like, I do not want to lock everything into one particular format, so my solution starts becoming more like fitting into the, the, uh, the tools I have. I, I can do uh, like uh, the pure Hadoop play. I can do all the workload which makes sense into Hadoop, we'll do it when we need to, let's say, run a decision tree algorithm. I don't want to go and create a decision tree algorithm. One of the learning we have in uh, Hadoop space is, like, you know, Mahout was taking good shape, but right now Mahout is, uh, is, is not production ready, in my view, uh, for the many of the algorithms. So, you know, my option is go and hire a data scientist and ask that data scientist to write a code. He's going to pick a code, and what we are doing is we are writing the same algorithm which is already exists somewhere else. So what SAS allows us to do is with enterprise miners, I can do, do neural network decision tree, uh, I can do Nibase, you know, um, I can do k-means clustering association, anything I need to. That's the, that's the power. Like now we are putting the synergy here with this too. So if I can, if just in case I want to do all of this thing in memory, I can lift the data into memory and do an exploration there. So a couple of use cases, architecture is one of the use case we have is we are building the predictive model. So although we are, our theme is big data, big data is, doesn't mean that a lot of data. You know, sometimes big data means lost data. For example, if you are trying to build a predictive model for the, uh, the congestive heart patients, how many congestive heart patients you are going to have? It's not going to be big data. It's not obviously everybody in America has heart, congestive heart failure condition. That's not 400 million rows also. So in that case, what is smart thing to do is use, you know, it's just, it's the, uh, as like in keynote they said, use the big data to find the small data and then do a, an, a smart analytics on that. So you, in, in this use case, like we use big data, that means data is in one place. And from there you extract the data which is very specific to what analytics you want to run and bring and apply whichever the smartest algorithm you have. And that's the first part of it. In case your data suddenly rolls, a lot of people get that same condition. Now you have data challenge. What would you do is you shift this and use the high performance analytics capability um, and then push the, the analytics now into the Hadoop cluster itself. So both, both platform exist. The second uh, architecture here is that like when you want to do an exploration, like. The exploration means, imagine if I create a long record into uh, healthcare, which means uh, every episode or incident since the birth of the person, you know, and if we start adding that, um, it would grow. And technology exists to support that now. And th this is what, and you, you want to do exploration of that, you need a plat uh, in memory uh, 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 analytics platform. So visual analytics allows us to do that. Actually, it can even do a forecasting type of functions in the fly. There's an all math computations in the fly. So in case the data grows, yes, you can push that analytics into parallel processing mode. So as a typical example here, like what you could do is, if you get your data right into Hadoop, if you build the, the data lake, and if you create a horizontal record, um, what happens now is, you could run this type of analysis on the fly. This is one example where like, you know, one of the challenges in healthcare is the cost of care. If you want to identify where the opportunities, are, where are my best practices, where my cost is low versus cost is high, I could do that variation analysis using the tools like this. As an example, in this case, like you could see one of the bubble and start finding the anomalies here. Like why would I have this particular facility uh, you know, ex excessive cost versus the some other facility. And you can drill down through the provider level 
and it is going to give uh, insight. It's basically turning analytics on what we do on every day. We, we are not perfect as a human beings. We, were, we are going to uh, learn from our um, mistakes or learn from what we do not do right. But it's important how do I find what is not right. And these are the tools allow us to perform that analytics. So, oops. Okay. All right. So what we accomplished right now is, or you know, program is for one year. Uh, we have enabled several capabilities of analytics, which is I can do machine learning predictive analytics. I can do descriptive analytics using k-means. I can do or uh, I can store as much of data I need. Um, I can I can do a data transformation. I can bring the data from multiple sources, like I can bring data from AS400, mainframe, Oracle database, SQL Server database, no matter where the data is, it is in one place. So now it's talking to each other. I can link that with the technology, like the, the capabilities like UMTI. Um, and you know, we are, we are healthcare, um, our, our primary focus is giving the better quality. What this does us to do is, if we have any use case, which can save our lives, we should not be waiting for it because technology is constraining you. That was the theme for us. So when we build this something that like, we don't want to go back and back and rebuild this again. We thought through this deeply, what is the best in the business and we brought it together. So it's a one platform. It can absorb multiple data sources. We can do real time analytics. We can manage multiple workloads and we can help uh, many consumers. So this is, this was the like, you know, we have multiple use cases running. Um, and what is, so what is the possibilities, right? Once you have the platform like this, if you have the resources available, you could run this five, and this, I put this five use cases, is because it shows the, the variation and the type of uh, use cases we are running. First one, we are running the readmission predictive model. You know, if you are in healthcare, you know how important that is. The, and you could not only run once, you know, we can experiment with this. We actually, you know, on daily basis, we are trying to find what variables really impact and find, use an insight that, you know, the person will be coming back after major surgery. Second one is the building compass. This is a um, very um, uh, important and uh, um, project for our CMIO, Dr. Kolarafi. He wants to build this compass so that we can find out a lot about unknowns, what is going on in, in, in our data, you know. Um, the data about the patient when they come in, you know, it is used today for, you know, uh, deriving in a treatment option and treating it. But if I find that, the, uh, the, and, and plus it is by a particular provider. If you think the one more provider in some other geo, geo location is treating the same way, are they treating same? Are they treating different? Is there any something you can learn? All of that you can achieve by bringing data into one place and giving this exploration capability to our data scientists and the clinical informations, um, and in, including doctors. Because like in healthcare, rather than in a retail, I found out retail, you have people from MBA and then they can analyze it. In healthcare, you need to make true impact. You really need to ultimately go to doctor who is the knowledgeable person about this data and this science. The third use case we are doing is a legacy report uh, system modernization. This doesn't sound very glamorous or like not clinical sounding, but if you look at in our keynote address, like there are things which actually, you know, we should challenge ourselves as an IT professionals. Why is ETL job running for nine hours in this DNAH? Like, you know, why? If we have technology, we should challenge that and take migrate that ETL job somewhere else. Why it takes me to create an, a custom report for 80 hours or 100 hours? It costs money. So why? Because the data is in mainframe. The only way I can do is I need a guy who knows RPG COBOL programming, then he can extract and bring it. By the time he gives that data, the importance of data is gone. So those constraints need to be revolved. This is, a, this is if you get the, your architecture right, what happens is these are the side benefits you are going to start getting it. Now you can say, hey, already I have this data into Hadoop. I can use Pig or Hive or I can put any any tool on top of uh, which people can read a SQL and create a, a report on the fly. We are doing another use case on pharmacy analytics. So you can start uh, spreading your arms like in the organization saying, if there is any other analytical use case, you can do it. What's motivating here is 
like like any IT project, and traditionally analytics project were treated like IT project. So I will come up with estimation. I need data, ETL, and so and so. Now what happens is since data is already sourced, okay, and since data is ready to be processed, and you, the languages like Pig, etc., your productivity is very high with the programming. You can easily start focusing on the use case and not focusing on the project management of like how do I get the data so that my data scientist will start this. The, if this is the gap we are trying to reduce. So we want to cut the middleman. That's what our uh, CMIO say, Dr. Kolahabi says, doctors can analyze this data better than the IT guy. We should take the IT guy in the middle out. Let the data come into Hadoop platform. It's enable to analysis and they can, and, uh, they can make the better decision. And the last use case here listed is the UMPI. So, uh, you know, if you go to doctor's place, every time you go, every place you go, you have to write this form, so and like you, you, your first name, last name, like so date of birth, again and again. That's a good, but if it is entered incorrectly, what happens? Like you are two different person in the system. If you are two different person in the system, you are going to get potentially two different uh, need for another blood test. Like although your first blood test may be okay, and that creates a lot of burden and the cost uh, for everybody. What do you do? How do you solve that? If you can build an, a capability, something like universal identifier, Hadoop is very good for the batch processing and doing some type of analytics like where you can, it can go and find out, oh, I'm already existing. If I can establish that identifier and imagine that every time any new record comes in and I tag that, I create this network of the data so I can connect the um, like you know blood reports versus the x-ray reports uh, and I can connect the admission data, I can create the ambulatory data. So all of this uh, data create, treated by one provider versus another provider, um, that, that's a possibility um, we are creating so that we can analyze this um, effectively. So in, in Dignity Health, change is happening. We, we just wanted to share uh, technology changes we are making so that we will continue to be one of the leading uh, healthcare provider in the nation. So um, if you have any questions or any discussion, I'm going to invite Dr. Graham Hughes here on the uh, stage so we can take your questions. Uh, this is this is the cl cloud infrastructure of SaaS. It's not r Amazon cloud. It's so I would call like it's more like a private cloud. But since it's a, it's a it's a collaboration between SaaS and us, like we um, we we get our own secure machines. Okay, we we control what the configuration of those machines. So the infrastructure, like the cloud infrastructure, is common, but the the uh, architecture or the plat uh, infrastructure itself is controlled by us. Mm -hmm. Great question. So the question is like, uh, you know, Mohammed, uh, um, yeah, Mohammed from WellCare, question is that like, uh, you know, they are a big SaaS shop. How is it to transition the, like, uh, um, from Hadoop to SaaS or SaaS to Hadoop or relational mindset? So if, if you look at the, the data when you do analytics, it's pretty much like a flat. When, when you get the data, um, originally data was coming from, let's say, a relational database. What we are you doing is you are spending time of transformation in some ETL tool. What we are doing is we took that and then trained our people to write a pig language. It's very easy, straightforward. People who do SAS, they can write pig easily. If you know SAS programming, there is a lot of similarity in that. So, uh, and like in addition, we put the schema, stricter schema with a high. So any data which comes in, so it's a readable because it has high. Anything you want to add on that? Oh, no, I think the, yeah. oh. The only other thing that I would say is that those routines that you already have in place don't need to be necessarily replaced. But as you start to then deploy Hadoop within your environment, you can leverage that either to supplement the existing SaaS data sets and the routines and algorithms that you already use, or you can actually then start to point SaaS directly to run your analytics in Hadoop, whether that's your data quality, data preparation, data management, 
for your your visualization or your other analytics directly in there. So again, you've got you've got the bit, you know the choice of both worlds, but you don't have to rip and replace. Yes, sir. That's a great question. Um, we are using a Cerner. Um, we have Cerner and we have G and right now like Cerner is Oracle base. Okay, so we. Are, we have created our own instance of Cerner. So it has a real-time replication. We do not want to attack the transaction system, OLTP system. So we have the replica of OLTP um, in near-time synchronization, and then we are connecting Hadoop to uh, this um, this uh, Oracle instance of uh, Cerner. So they, they also have Meditech, but are in the process of sunsetting that as they move to Cerner, so we've decided that we will not spend the time and energy to connect Meditech, but they do all in the ambulatory side have a, uh, a wide variety of different ambulatory EMR systems and EHR systems that we're in the process of evaluating. Some of those are actually Cerner, others are uh, the, the full gamut of different ambulatory EMRs that you might imagine, and we're looking at consolidation strategies to interact with those, and then uh, as I was chatting to you before about Sunil and I have been talking about using some of the emerging capabilities as we start to stream more data, um, and we will also be consuming some of the, uh, the fire interfaces through HL7 as a way of more dynamically querying into the EMR environments. Yes, absolutely. That's a great question. So do we have a plan to consume HL7 into um, Hadoop? Yes. So it's basically like the way we architected that like if I want to uh, get the queue from HL7 and then start parsing into Hadoop, yes, that's our plan. Right now we we don't have any use case, but it's, uh, it's coming soon, and so that's our strategy is like uh, absorb that to a queue and bring it in Hadoop. Capability exists, so that's what we uh, we we decided. Like you know, we have a platform. You can bring images and you can do analytics on that. Um, we do not have any use case right now to bring the images, but technology constraint doesn't exist now. Yeah, I think he is asking. So I think. Okay, uh, the great question, The uh, how do we address data sh sharing? It's like one hand we want to give the data to more people, other hand like you have to restrict it. So there are different user groups, so you have to start from there. There are user groups which are supposed to know what exactly they need to know. And then there is a data scientist group which needs to have explore the, the. So we have to define and s um, uh, that like is the role fits the, your need. And that's what we did with this, the, the role-based security. like. Role based security allows us to actually control how much you can see and what you can see. Yes, sir. No, we do not yet. Uh, but you know that's that's the that's a, that's the journey. Like you know maybe you can. Uh well, um, pretty much everything that we're doing is. Um, on that spectrum of decision support, I think. And so if you think about the sort of the traditional concurrent real-time rules-based decision support that exists within and relatively rudimentarily generally in, in electronic health records is that as we get closer and closer to real-time, that boundary between real-time concurrent decision support and asynchronous decision support that occurs through our readmission reduction risk scoring and our visualizations of care process variation which we are pushing to end users is that is a, a form of decision support and as we provide guidance on um, on combination of risk score as well as our next phase will be to then provide recommended actions associated with some of these insights is that I think what we're going to see over the next few years is that this concept of point of care decision support is a complete blend of knowledge that is coming from 
uh, declarative and rules-based systems right the way through to data-driven systems that we'll have in place. And it leads to another area that Sunil and I talk about, which is the need for curation of knowledge management of the decision and the knowledge framework that is being generated and executed in the environment. And uh, we have a number of plans about how we think that we will maintain and manage the publishing cycle of that knowledge. So I, in summary, I'd say we are doing decision support today, just maybe not the way that it would be been thought of five years ago. Sure. Can you wait? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, great question. So um, our readmission, existing readmission model is not yet using the claims data. We are having the uh, registration data as one of the things. Uh, like and I so cl yeah. primarily clinical data, registration, administrative data, uh, pre-adjudicated claims and, and, and paid claims are being added into those models as we speak. Okay. We uh, think we need to finish. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.